So what we're going to do is we're here to expose it, let people tell their story, and let them, let everybody in the public see the horrors of the court system in Suffolk County, New York. Long Island Backstory with Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs. Good afternoon, I'm Gary Jacobs and welcome to another edition of Long Island Backstory. Uh, today, uh, I have guests that have been on my show before and um, I'm really happy to have them back on the show and that's because they're, they're making progress in what they're doing. Today's guests are Kathy Cole to my left, obviously, and Frank Vetro to my far left, both previous guests on Long Island Backstory. They've both told their stories on whistleblowing before. If you want to learn more about their stories, because we're not going to really talk so much about their individual stories today, but about the journey into whistleblowing, you should go to uh, Google and just search Long Island Backstory, Frank Vetro, and then also uh, Kathy Cole. Um, today's topic, as I said, is whistleblowing. We want to talk about who's a whistleblower, why would anybody want to be a whistleblower, and if you do decide to do it, how would you go ab about doing it? Um, I really have a lot of respect for my guests. I don't have too many guests that I have back on the show uh, time and time again, and these are two guests that I have a lot of respect for. I'm proud to call both of them uh, friends. They're warriors, and uh, this is not easy, uh, what they do. There's a, there's a lot of personal sacrifice to do this, and for both of them, it would be very easy for them to just go away and go on with their life, and they didn't. So, uh, guys, welcome to uh, Long Island Backstory. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Okay, so first let's start off, and this is going to be the most difficult part of the program because I'm going to ask Frank to do something briefly, but I gave him a warning of about a minute and a half because he's got a long story. In all seriousness, it's, very, it's, it's, it's a horrible story, and it does deserve a lot more than a few minutes, but just so the guests know who we're talking about, briefly tell us uh, about your story and what happened to you. You bet. So I'm Frank Vetro. And back, I was a high school principal in the Hamptons area uh, back in 2006, uh, 2005. I reported, uh, tried to report child abuse in an educational setting, and I learned that you cannot uh, see something, say something. Don't report anybody that's connected. All right, don't do it. So the person I reported, the social studies teacher, Newfield High School, uh, was in cahoots with the principal. Uh, she was uh, had a relationship going on with the pol uh, police officer. So the school district covered for her, the police officer covered for her, the DA's office in turn covered for the police who covered for Middle Country Central School District, the Attorney General's office covered for the DA's office who covered for the police department who covered for Middle Country Central School District, all the way up to the governor's office and a few offices in between at the state level. Um, so I was retaliated against instead of arresting her because I had the goods on her, uh, just for reporting or trying to report, protect kids, they arrested me and I got taken down for everything that they should have taken her down for. I was all over the media, called a terrorist, labeled a terrorist in the, in the media, lost my job, eventually was living out of my car. I was retaliated a second time, against for a second time, for uncovering racial discrimination in Hampton Bay School District. And I appeared as a witness in a discrimination case, sexual orientation against my school district after receiving a subpoena. So two times I tried to do the right thing, you know, you get a subpoena, oh, I'll just go tell the truth. Who wouldn't do that? Judge subpoenas you to go somewhere. Um, kid being abused, who wouldn't want to report that? You try to just do the right, mandated reporter, by the way. I didn't step out of bed and say, let me go report somebody. Mandated reporter. And as a result, I was arrested. I was living in my car. I lost everything. And subsequently, here I am, Gary. And Kathy, tell us about what you bring, what, what brought you to this. Well, um, it's an issue that not too many people think of until unfortunately there's a tragedy and children in the business that I'm in, school gym safety, uh, children have been killed in their electric <coughs> dividers in their school gym and uh, New York State is the only state in the nation with a law that has, um, that requires safety devices for these partitions to stop them. And um, I was in the know. I was heavily involved with the New York State and the New York City Department of Education implementing this, meeting with the architects, engineers, and I knew that they were not properly following the law and I was afraid another child was going to be killed. And I reported it and much like Frank, um, it became, instead of them fixing the problem, they tried to eliminate me for reporting it. Uh, so that brings us to what we're here today for, Whistleblowers, the movie. Let's just go ahead and show the trailer from the Whistleblowers movie and then we'll get back to the show. Rat, tattletale, 
Canary, Snitch, Narc, and Backstab. So that's the definition of a whistleblower. The massive wooden mechanical wall was virtually identical to this one. Witnesses say Deanna Moon became wedged between the edge of the moving partition and the gym's wall. It was apparent that the safety devices were not being maintained. Deanna's death caused me to blow the whistle on the education department. I started reaching out to other people through social media, and I wound up meeting this very unique group who saw something and had the audacity to say something. My name is Frank Vedro. My name is Mary Ellen Belding. And my name is Jeffrey Mansour. Akosia Adjaman. Mary Bazoyan. Francesco Portellos. Kathy Cole. Each one of us is reporting a different kind of atrocity. We're not doing it to protect ourselves. We're doing it to protect the general public. I'll just tell them the truth. And I wound up eventually living in my car. I went from almost $100,000 to getting food from the pantry. They were basically saying, look, shut up and don't ask any questions. I felt for some reason this was my duty or my calling to bring together this group of whistleblowers. That was the beginning of feeling that I wasn't alone. For so long, I thought it was just me. I'm gonna find every pill in this house and I'm gonna take it and be done. Kathy Cole called. It has been a battle every single day in my business and my family. We need someone to do something, and I guess I'm it. If you have unwavering faith and belief that you are right, you will win. So as, as everybody could see in the clip, it's, it's very emotional. You can see that, I, I hate to even call it a story because a story is something that's not real. This is real and, and real lives were damaged here. And you could see everybody in the trailer, we could all see the, the emotion. I mean, this is, this is heart wrenching. And you could see the pain that everybody feels, you know, when you, when you watch just the trailer. So I'm sure the movie is gonna be uh, even, even more heart wrenching. Well, the first phase of the movie for, for funding purposes, we could only do a 50 minute documentary. And I'm proud to say that a production company has picked it up and they are promoting it to uh, several agencies. And it just debuted at the National Whistleblower Summit in Washington, D.C., and we won a humanitarian award for wow. it. And last year, the documentary Cirque Pico won. So wow. it, You're was in good company. Great, it was a great honor. Right. So tell, tell the audience, what is a whistleblower? Frank, you want to? The, the, if you Google it, it's a rat. <laughs> Uh, tattletale, a snitch. Uh, negative, guess. negative terms. And, all ne and maybe that's why I didn't really classify myself as one, I don't know, the negative, you know, uh, the, the negative uh, stigma that's placed upon it. I, I just never, until I met Kathy, I knew everything about my story and, and I just didn't know why it happened to me. And she said, geez, you're a whistleblower, that's why. I'm like, and I started, I'm like, yeah, I am a whistleblower. You know, whistleblower, see something, say something. Um, you see the signs all the time, you know, subways, offices, wherever it may be, uh, public, on the streets, see something, say something. You, they want you, they, they tell you, if you see something going on, call, here's the number, report it. Sounds great, I'm gonna help society, I see something bad happening. The problem is, be careful, and, and you know, there's a way to do it, and like I said, know who you're reporting. Don't think that just because you're reporting something, and it may be terrible, like child abuse, children dying, uh, as Kathy uh, uh, reported. Disabled people being raped, raped. and sexually assaulted. And uh, you know, this whistleblower who's in my documentary, his career was destroyed. And the attorney general, uh, a jury of his peers just found the state guilty for him reporting these atrocities. And the attorney general's office asked the judge to overturn the jury verdict. That it would be that it would be not guilty, and the judge couldn't do that because it would have opened up a whole can of whoop ass on the state. Mm -hmm. So he just won. We just found out yesterday. The attorney general threw in the towel and said, oh. "Okay, fine. Uh, we, you know, the state is guilty." But I mean, it's just unbelievable. And um, October twentieth, two thousand and nine, was the day I knew that I was chosen to be a whistleblower because the. Director of Facilities of Five Million Children in the New York State Education Department told me that I was a rat. And he told me that he had enough of me going around to all the elected officials and he was putting me out of business. 
and that if another child is killed, their family will be compensated for their loss. It's none of my business. I'm poking my nose where I didn't belong. And I didn't know I was going to become a whistleblower, but I just assumed that I would report him and report uh, the fraud and systemic corruption that I had uncovered over the years surrounding this issue and school procurement. And each time I reported, I became victimized again by the DA or the Attorney General. So there's a huge, huge conflict of interest in the Attorney General's office that you just found out. Right. Firsthand. Well, what I, what I think is interesting, and I know I know better, but I would think, and I think the viewers are going to think, well, if somebody's going to blow the whistle on something, everybody's going to welcome you with open arms and say, hey, this is great. Because if you're blowing the whistle, it's usually only two or three people you know, oh, that are really guilty of it. Not everybody is guilty of a crime, usually. So you would think everybody would jump on board. The public would be happy. The elected officials would be happy. The attorney general, this is what we want. Like you said, we want to, if somebody, somebody's doing something wrong, we need to make society better. But it's really the opposite. It's total opposite. And, and the irony of it all is, when you're, I was a school principal, I would, they create a law, like you're mandated, and if you don't report it, you suffer consequences. I could lose my license for not report, for turning a blind eye to child abuse in an educational setting. So not only you better report it, or else you're in trouble. So then you report it, and you're in trouble. Report. And even though the, the community, like I said, should be happy, yeah, the general public is, isn't mad at you, the general public is, but they don't come forward with you because mm -hmm. then their lives get destroyed. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a tough power, it's a tough predicament to be in. You really are on an island when you blow the whistle on something. And when you're blowing the whistle on very well-respected people, you know, uh, who are they gonna believe? Me, the greedy vendor who wants mm -hmm. to make money? Or are they gonna believe the superintendent of the mm -hmm. school district or the head of or, the or, or whatever, department? Or the attorney general's yeah. office or right. the governor's office. Yeah. It, it, is, it is a perception of, uh, you know, who, who you're gonna believe and, you know, who's, who's in the right and he's just like, you know, a policeman. You know, we tend to all think, you know, the guy's wearing a uniform, we always should believe the police officer. But as we found out here in Long Island, especially in the 4th Precinct, a lot of times they do lie and they do cover, cover up. And that's not to say that, that all of them do. Um, but what I think it is a little bit different now, and I don't know if, how you guys feel, wh whistleblowers are more threatening now because of social media. Because it used to be, well, you're going to blow the whistle to. Who are you going to go to? Newsday is, is not going to report on it, no. you know, because they're protecting their, their own people. Cablevision is news to well, They're not going to report. So who could you blow the whistle to? There's really nobody. Well, but now when, you when can I create did my your speech, and I thanked them, you know, profoundly for the award. And I said, um, you know, the government better watch out now. Because when a corporation blows the whistle, you expect corporations to be greedy and to right. be self-serving. When you blow the whistle on the government, you expect them to be working for you and doing the right thing. So what they didn't count on was Instagram, Facebook, this show. Right. WLIMY, right. stuff like, it, you know. We, 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 are, we are becoming a force to be reckoned Absolutely. with. And you, and you guys don't go away. And I just started <laughs> Whistleblower Productions, LLC. In the which is of, what uh, is a production company for whistleblowers to which tell stories. Great. Which is what we do on this show. Yeah. Is I said this is this and that we both I had you both tell your stories because this is a way to get the message out. That's and right. although it's only a Long Island show, if you look, I mean we don't know how many viewers we get on TV, but we get thousands and thousands on Facebook, thousands on YouTube, and it doesn't go away. You know, it's yeah. not like all right, we suck it up. They, they they put an article in the paper one day. Frank's spewing it out every week on, on his radio show. I'm you're you're my show up because are you all okay? Great. Down. You're you're all over the place. I, and if I could just say, my true hope now is with the new attorney general coming in to office. Um, I don't think people realize the critical role that the attorney general plays. Should play. Should play. Um, I'm going to talk about that. And 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 a district attorney. I mean, we. I think Mr. Sinney needs to revisit. Much, I mean, we're, I'm getting foils on a daily basis with fraud, stealing from the tax. Well, let, let's talk about the, I mean, who is there, whose job is it to protect the people? And we talked about this uh, be, be, before the show. But isn't the Attorney General's office, the Inspector General's office, the DA, isn't their job to protect the public? That is their job. But they're, but they're actually, well, you'll explain, I'll, I'll ask you the question, are they protecting the public? Well, well, this is where we have a huge issue in New York State. The New York State Education Department, which Frank and I are victims of the Attorney General defending, um, there's no Inspector General. It's the only branch of the government without one. And their budget is, you know, massive, larger than uh, seven states, the CIA, a crazy budget. And there's nowhere to go. So the Inspector General, I was referred there uncovering the fraud that I have right in front of me here six Black years and white. ago. And 
they said, oh, we don't have jurisdiction over this. You have to go to the attorney general. I'm like, he's defending them in a lawsuit. Right. And, and, so then who do you go to? And not no only one. that, when I finally got the Commission of Education at the time, Mills at the time, to start an investigation into the office I, want investi I wanted to investigate at the state ed department level, the person he put in charge of the investigation was the head of that department. Talk about the Fox Watch in the head house. Yes. I wonder me. what the results of that investigation yeah. was. Right. Please send us some information. We'd like Mr. Thurnow to investigate this. I'm like, he just threatened me. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. I mean, if you look at the website for the Attorney General's office, they say their job is to protect the public. So in your case, why wouldn't they look at it and say, maybe this woman's telling the truth. Let's let her do it. Because unfortunately, you've got legal fees. I mean, you just showed me a bill for over almost $90,000 yeah. in legal fees. For Personal. a discovery dispute with the Attorney General's office. Right. He was withholding uh, evidence, and the judge made him turn it over. But now you can't get that money back. Yeah. And who suffers? The people, because the taxpayers, the taxpayers are paying for them to go after you. It's, it's just it, it's, it's, so, it's not correct. So I have a recording from the DA's office, Detective Nicolino, um, Assistant District Attorney Nicolino, and I'm just going to read quickly here. So I said, let me tell you what happens, because he's like, you know, there's various public officials that are paid to prevent exactly what you're claiming is happening. The assistant superintendent for BOCES, for example. I said, well, let me tell you what happens. They lied to the attorney general in the district attorney's office, and I can prove it. They lied. Well, if it's a provable lie, and they have in fact lied, and they have enabled somebody to commit further crimes that you are alleging, then this is certainly something that the Government Corruption Bureau, which that's a whole nother story, McPartland, McPartland. <laughs> that I went to for seven and a half who, hours and three Who was under investigation hours, for corruption. For, for covering up government right. corruption. Or the Attorney General's office would handle that. Which, look what's going I on said, there. he's defending them. Right. He's in a joint defense defending this. Right. right. I mean, you can't, you can't get more of a conflict. You can't make it up. You can't get more of a conflict no. than that. He went that way. So let, let's just go back, you know, to the, uh, to the movie, because I want to talk, talk about that. How did this whole movie come about? What made you say that this is the way that I want to go because there's a million directions you could go and you could have just given up. This is taking a lot of both of your lives. I mean, this is a passion. Tell me, yeah, wanna, how did this movie come about? I want to give Kathy credit for that because, uh, you know, all of us think about, oh, a documentary and right. let's you know, go to 2020, go yeah, to, yeah. everybody's going to pick up my story yeah, yeah, and thought, then nobody cares. I thought about it. My ego, right? I wrote a book. My ego, oh, I'm going to documentary. Kathy, I remember we were sitting at the steakhouse, actually, Madison Steakhouse for an event we were at. and. Um, she had the idea to put multiple stories in to get them from a lot of angles cause, because when you put different stories in, you show the same pattern of corruption. The right. systemic that, pattern that of corruption. Of different facts. Which is important. We're, we're, we're different angles that we come from. Different like, agencies. Different stories, but the pattern is so ill. And then when you see it on screen, it's not like reading a piece of paper. It's like you, like you started the show with, Gary. It is It, it really touches a nerve when you see the, the hurt What's going and the on? destruction of what goes on with not just the people that are uh, that blew the whistle, but their families. Right. So how did you find all the people to be in the movie? I thought was there eleven I, people. How many people? In well, the movie? there were seven whistleblowers and two victims, but they're whistleblowers as well. One of them's son was murdered by um, in a group home run by New York State, and the person that murdered him had been fired from previous homes. Thirteen-year-old uh, nonverbal autistic young man. They drove around for an hour and a half with this young man in the van trying to figure out how to cover their tracks. Wow. And he's become a tremendous advocate, Mike Carey. And um, I just had people start reaching out to me like crazy. After Frank interviewed me initially several years ago, and then I started my All Fact Up, I had to stop doing it because I felt like I wasn't doing a service no to people. Because I had so many people. And the, the, the whistleblowers in this movie I handpicked because it's a common thread of gross gross misconduct by government officials and we all get federal funding so this is a national disgrace what's happening in these agencies and, and, in new york state and what comes through with the stories that she picked is a complete lack of regard for human life i mean not just because they didn't act on the the people we blew the whistle on and, and to protect kids because ultimately a lot of the stories most of our stories we're just trying to protect kids at the end of the day not even that but they don't care what they do to our lives. We could die in front of them and they'd be happy. And is it all about the cover-up, though? It's all about the cover-up. At cover the end up. of the day, somebody does yeah. something wrong. 
And he started sucking it up, and I think it's because a lot of these are elected officials, from what I see, because I see it in the court system, they figured, you know what, let's let enough time go by, eventually we'll be out of office, right. and let the next guy deal with the right. problem. I don't want to have a big lawsuit payout, even when it comes to putting people in jail that they know shouldn't be in jail. They say, oh, let's kick the can down the road, because when the guy gets out and he sues and he gets 10, 20, 30, 40 million dollars, I'll be out of office, I'll be retired, I'll have my pension. Right. And yeah, but nobody wants to take this, it up. You know, disabled people, they're being falsified fire drills. They're dying in homes where they're fires are. They're exposed to radon gas. They're being raped and videotaped by employees of the state. She's not making and that And nothing up. is going on. And now another child, I'm reporting my issue, another child was just killed in Virginia, nine years old. And it's the same exact doors that we have here in the state. And in Half Hollow Hill School District, where Deanna was killed in 1991, they're missing five safety devices. They initially, when this article came out, freaked out and said that I wasn't telling the truth, to retract it, they were going to sue, and I have to commend them. They had my company come in and meet, and they said, how could this be? And I said, that's because the man who threatened me never enforced this law. The funding is somewhere for it. This is not an unfunded mandate. So you have the district where a girl was killed missing these, and it's funded? Mm -hmm. How? There's no read, there's... And so what you have are not, not only kids, the most vulnerable, but disabled kids. They can't even speak out on their own behalf. And We're rape, speaking for them. Dying, and it's a billion dollar scam, multi-billion dollars, and it goes not just local level, the Attorney General's office, isn't go, that where, Governor isn't, Cuomo. Isn't that Cuomo where the buck stops? Job. I mean, it's not like it's so far removed from them. To me, and tell me if I'm wrong, it's the governor who's controlling the attorney general's office. Instead of saying, sit down with them, see if they have a case. If they have a case, let's settle it and fix it. Let's not let another kid die. Let's not let another person get I raped. Let's not let another person go to jail. Let's fix the damn problem now. Nope. Mr. Vetro, I can't help you. There's nothing we can do for you. But well, isn't that where the buck stops? And who, where, let's, whose fault is this? Who do we point the figure at? The attorney at? general and the governor. I mean, that, that's... I, I believe that. Down. That's yep. it. That's it. Because they I, can stop it right away. Well, yeah. I reached out to Cuomo in 09, and, he, and finally, after six months back and forth and showing him, he's, the office says, oh, he can't, he's in a precarious position because in the event of litigation, he Precarious to kid's life. It's actually... Then it, recuse yourself and appoint a special prosecutor. Right. It's actually Cuomo's office that created the Justice Center right. so that they could, cover, it they could cover it all up. The rapes. There have been 20,000 deaths in the past four years in these state-run homes. And wow. there have been three criminal prosecutions. Three. One was the boy who was murdered. It's all covered up. It's called the Justice Center. And these crimes are not reported to the district attorneys and the local. Um, you don't call 911. You don't call 911. You, call, you have to call the Justice Center. Yes. It's where they it's, it's, it's a yes. black hole. So they can so control they it. The yes. DA. They can control the damage. And they, get, and they don't have the, the Medicaid money that they Sad. get. It's. Total it's, it's terrific. So let me ask you, so we, we don't have too much, too much time left. So the movie's going to come out. What do you hope to get? I mean, I always say, you know, sunlight is the best disinfectant. We've, we've all heard that saying, and I truly believe that, exposing it and not going away. You keep doing these shows, we do a movie, then we're going to do another movie, you know, and they say, look, these people aren't, listen, you guys are not going away. If they don't, and, I, and you know I've said this before, I don't know if I say, well, we can use the beep button, but when they, hit, they got involved with you guys, they fuck with the wrong person. A lot of people would go away. You guys aren't going away. No, no. You are never going to go. I know you two. You are not going to go away till this problem no is fixed. Well, uh, and maybe my, they're getting that sick that that <laughs> message now when the movie comes my, out. My yeah. solution for this systemic problem and whistleblowers are depressed. They're anxiety ridden. Of course. They're PTSD. Attacked, they're sure. afraid. They bankrupt them. They lose their. So I started this company so that we could document, maybe in an eight to 10 minute, like a PSA, a public service announcement, and have them come to us. And living through it, we can extract what we need to make for you, a small video for you to present to either the feds or the DA. Because a visual or, is so much better. Or an attorney. Let them see the picture of who was harmed. Let them hear what your children It's not feel. just a piece of paper, and, it's and a life, it's a face. And we guide condensing their story into a five minute, Get facts seven minute out. piece. And, and a lawyer will be more apt to say, damn. But also, I think once it's out and they know it's out, they can't claim, if it ends up in court, they can go, listen, we can't claim we didn't know, because we saw the video, we saw we the sent proof. We you the video. So you can't go into court and say, listen, we didn't know about well, this, we're ignorant. That's right. why so I have that's important. And tape recordings. The attorney general got all but 40 out. My top 40 is in. He got over 2,000 tape recordings thrown out. Wow. 
Yeah. Of course, they don't want it because that's, right. that's the case. But you still got some. My story. Me, are there laws? Because we always hear about whistleblowing laws in business and companies. Are there, are there laws protecting whistleblowers? It's supposed to be. There they, are laws. They exist. They, New York State has exist. the worst laws in the nation protecting whistleblowers, and we are the most corrupt state. So go, <laughs> go figure. figure. Exactly. Well, what are the laws? Because like, what is the law with the whistleblower? Because when there's a whistleblower, when there's, you know, retaliation is really is illegal. It's really the highest form of, of a discriminatory uh, 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 attack on somebody. Because think about it: once you prevent people from uh, blowing a whistle, then they can get away with everything else they're doing. Right. So I came. Uh, one of the things I, I tried to report was racial discrimination. I was retaliated against, which is really worse, with all due respect, than racial discrimination. Because once you get rid of the people that want to help protect and fight against that, well, now they can do that. Right. So it's really it's the it's, it's the worst. It's, it's also whether they plan it or not. This is sort of litigating people into submission because, as Kathy said, you guys don't have the money. I mean, you're you're this big. The state's inf has unlimited resources. Well, and that's why I like my quote. And, and I mean, that's and, and let's just uh, do that because I'm in court with this man now. And I just want to show everybody because we need to support the the, the people who who promote the uh, what's going on here. And this is a, a local Long Island paper that's done a few stories Long on whistleblowing. Long Island businesses go out and get it. You know, we have to support because this is an independent, and they have the courage to go ahead and do it. But Kathy has a quote in here. Maybe we can find it. There it is over here. Okay. And this is what we're talking about with the Attorney General's office. Uh, she's quoted in the paper saying, the New York State Attorney General is the executor for the state whistleblowers. The Attorney General's job should be to protect the disabled, the children, and the taxpayers. Instead, the Attorney General's power and unlimited resources are used to shield the wrongdoing in state agencies. And I can tell you Perfect. for a fact that is 100% true. Because if anything, they should say, look, we're going to recuse for now. And we're going to sit back because when you file a motion in court, everything's supposed to be taken the facts most favorable to the plaintiff because we don't know what the facts are yet. What if you guys are telling the truth? They just victimized you even more. I've been victimized by right. the attorney general. Right. So that's, they're attorney. victimizing you. We so begged Governor Cuomo to remove Spoda. I was going to have, they were laughing in my face. I have the, I have the, we're not going to do anything. You're tilting at windmills. There's a thousand companies ripping off the government, Kathy. It's too big of a problem. <laughs> So there, there is, but you got to start somewhere. You know, if the DA's you office go after actually said, I heard it. You played it for me. That they wait for them to the criminals, the people to, to come, turn themselves to in. come to them. It's a long I, I wait. Heard, I heard it with That's my own ears. How do you even say that? I heard serious, it with my own ears. With a serious I, face. I can't even believe what we're, I heard. We're, we're getting down to the end of the show, guys. So tell where can people see the whistleblowers movie? Okay, so we're we're working we're not on venues yet. now. We're gonna have, I uh, we're gonna have one. Uh, I'll, I'll keep you, you know, apprised of when. It's coming so, up but, So the, for the people who are watching it, is there a Facebook page, a website you that they can... You cannot see the whole video. Well, but that they can sign up so they get notified oh, when it's sure. out there. Where, yeah. would, where would they go? Um, so you can come on my Facebook, Kathy Cole, or you can go on All Fact Up or Frank Vetro. Frank Vetro, you go to my website, frankvetro.com. The, the trailer is on my website. It's on my Facebook page. It's on her Well, they saw, it, they saw it on the show at the beginning, oh, so, oh, that, oh, yeah, so, that, so, so it's over there. And anybody who's watching, actually, I think the best way to do it, because we will do a follow-up show, is to, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Long Island Backstory. And then you'll get notified when it comes out. Go to the Long Island Backstory Facebook page because we're definitely going to be talking about uh, when the movie comes out because we got to get people to see it. And I'm sure there's other whistleblowers on Long Island who are, and, and all over who are watching this, and they may reach out. And now you're going to have to do yes, more movies. And, and, and people have been reaching out been like happening. crazy from all over the nation after this whistleblower conference. We were on a few panels. It's scary that we have to have a conference for and whistleblowers. What, <laughs> and what what I'm telling you is if you. If you're in a position and you need help or you need a little guidance, you can confidentially contact us and we can try and guide you in the right way because your lives don't have to be destroyed really in careers the way ours were. And there's a, there's a right way to blow the whistle. Right, yeah. so before, if you're thinking about doing it and you're watching it, you know, please uh, reach out to uh, Kathy and, uh, and Frank and maybe you can save yourself some heartache and do some good. I'm and Gary Jacobs. And we good yep. connections with some great whistleblower Absolutely. attorneys in DC. That's important too. Yeah. I'm Gary Jacobs. Thank you for joining us on Long Island Backstory. Thank you to, to my guests for coming out again, Kathy Cole, Frank Vetro. Follow, follow their their stories and their progress and support them in any way you can and you know what if you don't have the money it's very easy share their shows if you're watching this on facebook youtube share it all over social media and get the message out we'll see everybody next week